Are you ready for some live singing this morning? Instead of a recording, right? There you go. Let's all stand and praise a wonderful Savior. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hides my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He takes my burden away. He hides me up shall not be moved he gives me strength as my day he hides my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land he hides my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there when clothed in his brightness, transported, I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hides my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a bright, thirsty land. He hides my life in the dead of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. Maybe see. It is Sunday. All right. I finally know what day of the week it is. Were you like it? After the, about the third week of all that, I thought, what, what day is it? Because Sunday is such an anchor point. In Psalm 122, we read, I rejoiced with those who said, let's go to the house of the Lord. And I've been looking so forward to being together. And I know that we as Christians are the house of the Lord, that it's not a particular temple or anything. But boy, it is great to be together. When, when we were together last time as a group, uh, it was uh, the Sunday after the tornado, and the auditorium was dark. We did not have heat or air. We had a portable sound system. We didn't have slides. We worshiped kind of in darkness, and we presented uh, Headmaster Key Singer at Donaldson Christian Academy, a $10,000 check toward rebuilding of the, uh, from the tornado damage, and we had no idea when we walked out that it would be 14 Sundays before we would be together. And we're so glad that you're here. Today, yeah, it's a little bit different. Uh, seating uh, with empty pews between us and all of that kind of stuff. Some of you wearing masks. By the way, some of you look much better with masks on. Danny, you need to wear your mask, man. Okay, no, not while you're singing. Uh, we're so glad. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little different, but it's okay because we're still the church. And for those of you joining us online, we're glad that you're with us too. And you'll notice a new backdrop. We uh, think that enhances our media presence. We want to say thanks to Joe Carroll and to Randy Nipps and uh, Michelle Davidson for doing that. Uh, even though you're not here physically with us, you are a part of our body. And we're so thankful uh, you are. And we look forward to the time when uh, you have the health and the ability to come out. We look forward to that. But please know that our shepherds want you to be safe. Well now, let's come together into the presence of the Lord with a joyful heart, a heart ready to worship, and let's praise our great God in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Spirit. You know, our 9 o'clock service, there was a lot more people here, and I'm going, what is wrong with you people? You could have slept in and come at 11 o'clock, right? Right? The smart people are in here today, right? All the smart people. No, it's great. It's great to be together. Uh, this first song that we're going to sing, it reminds us that in Jesus, when we are weak, then 
is when we're strong. This song reminds us that he is the treasure in this field of life that we, that we search for. And when we are dry, we drink of the living spirit that is within us. Amen. Let's all stand and sing. He is our all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious Jew. Lord, to give up by me a You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. When the dark clouds had done their worst, Jesus brought purity over their curse. He is our times like this, realize, we realize how faithful our God is. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my
church said. What do you what do you decide to preach on on a day like today? Our world, our nation, our community, our lives are not the same that they were just 90 days ago. For us, it began uh, uh, on March the 3rd with a tornado that dramatically impacted uh, a number of our own members. And then, just immediately after that, some little thing I'd never heard of before. Coronavirus? What, what, what is that? And then straight line winds, if that weren't enough, okay. We had some more tree damage that was phenomenal to, to see. And then we've had incredible racial tension the last number of weeks with protests. And, and, and on top of that, since we've not been together physically, uh, things among our church body have, have changed. There are some of our precious brothers and sisters that have gone to be with the Lord. And we were not able to gather with the family during a funeral and hug them. And others had babies, and we've only seen pictures of them online. We haven't been able to ooh and ah in person and maybe even to hold them. Some have graduated. At least they got the paper, but they didn't have an, a, a big gathering. We weren't able to sit in the stands and yell and cheer and clap. Uh, some have had surgery and, and are recovering. Wedding showers and baby showers have been postponed. Drew and Arden's wedding shower postponed. Our, our foster daughter in Guatemala, her wedding postponed. We were supposed to be in Guatemala back a few weeks ago. That's on hold. Then there are the financial things that have impacted even some of us here. But you know, here we are. We are here. We are here in the name of the Lord. We're together. We're excited to be together. Um, the, the first couple of weeks, it was pretty cool, you know, sitting in pajamas or whatever, you know, drinking coffee. Mark Sturgis texted me the first Sunday when we didn't meet. He goes, I kind of like this pajama and coffee thing. But, you know, after a few weeks, you go, wait a minute, I'm, I'm really starting to miss people. I've learned some different things through all of this. I'm sure you have too. And one for me is, whoa, I, I need people. I miss being with people. And our family of believers has found, have found ways to continue to serve in the name of the Lord, which looked different, but the church is still the church and God is still being glorified and people are being helped. The outpouring of love from this church in the aftermath of the tornado, some of our members can testify, yes, it's unbelievable the things that were done. Uh, cutting trees and hauling limbs and packing boxes and a number of you were so good at making phone calls and sending notes. It's just huge. Praying and encouraging others. So what do you decide to talk about on a day like today? Do we talk about loss and grief? Yes. Do we talk about racial tension? Yes. Do we talk about the need to have hope and peace? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. So how in the world can you do that in a shortened service? Well, the Lord has kept bringing to my mind and my heart Romans chapter 12. If you have a Bible, I'd encourage you to turn there or pick it up on your smartphone or whatever. The fact is there are enough things in these verses to preach a series of sermons on. Uh, you can't just do that in one time. But I'll tell you, it's safe to assume that there's at least one thing and probably many things in here that we need to hear at this time. Danny was talking to him. He said, you know, before all this stuff came, we were talking about awaken. But what have we been awakened to? Well, Romans chapter 12 is something to awaken to. And as we read these verses, I'd like to ask that you not do, not do two things. First of all, do not look at it as a checklist. Okay? If you look at it as a checklist, you're going to miss the point. When I shared that passage uh, earlier in the week with Caleb, Caleb's going to do communion in a little bit. He said, so basically we should do all the things I'm not good at, right? And I laughed because I said, man, I understand what you're saying. But do not look at it as a checklist. Secondly, I'd like to encourage you to listen to it from a personal perspective, not, boy, I hope they're listening to this. I hope that individual is listening to this, or I hope that group of people are listening to these verses. No, I'd encourage us not to look at it as a checklist, and not to look at this something for someone else, but to look at it from a personal perspective. You see, this letter 
if you read it, the beginning parts of it and throughout it, all the way up to this point, it's very clear we're in Jesus. It, it's Jesus who saves us. It's Jesus who redeems us. It's through Him we live. It's by the Holy Spirit, the fruit of that Spirit in our lives, that we live transformed lives. And so this is some of the transformation that takes place as you walk with the Lord. It's not something you do on your own power. So I'd like us to read it from the viewpoint of, Lord, what would you have me to hear and apply in my life? Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need and practice hospitality. I'll tell you, I have seen these things lived out in tangible ways in the last 90 days by this body of believers. It's been phenomenal. Verse 14, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn or weep with those who mourn, with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low positions and do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. And if it's possible, as far as depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. And doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Our, our longtime missionaries in Mozambique, uh, Rachel and Alan Howe, had a, a, a method of studying the Bible with people that's just so insightful. It, it's not unique to them, they'll tell you that. But what they'll do is they'll read a passage three different times, sometimes from different translations, without comment, and just let people sit in it for a minute to listen to it. And so I'm not going to read from three different translations. I'm going to read from another one in just a moment. And when I, when I do, you may wish to read from the words on the screen, or you may wish to just close your eyes and, and listen. Uh, whenever our shepherds get together for their meetings, uh, usually on Wednesday nights, They'll begin, as they have every time I've been with them for 10 years, they'll begin with devotional time and prayer. And a lot of times when the shepherd is having devotional time, I'll close my eyes. It's not because I'm trying to get rested for the hour and a half that follows. It's that I'm trying to focus on the words without distraction. And so some of us are pretty easily distracted. I'm one of those guys. So if I close my eyes, it helps me. And it's good for me periodically just to, to hear, to hear the word. So do what works for you. This, when we did this in staff meeting this past Tuesday, Allison uh, read, we did read it in three different translations, Allison read from the New International Reader's Version, and I said, oh, 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 I'd like that. And so that's the one we'll have our second reading. You may close your eyes and listen, or follow along on the screen. Love must be honest and true. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. Love one another deeply. Honor. Honor others more than yourselves. Stay excited about your faith as you serve the Lord. When you hope, be joyful. When you suffer, be patient. When you pray, be faithful. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and welcome others into your homes. Bless those who hurt you. Bless them and do not curse them. Be joyful with those who are joyful. Be sad with those who are sad. Agree with one another. Don't be proud. I like the, the wording of this. Be willing to be a friend of people who are not considered important. 
Don't think that you are better than others. Don't pay back evil with evil. Be careful to do what everyone thinks is right. If possible, live in peace with everyone. Do that as much as you can. My dear friends, do not try to get even. Leave room for God to show His anger. For it is written, I am the God who judges. I will pay them back, says the Lord. So do just the opposite. Scripture says, if your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. By doing these things, you will pile up burning coals on their heads. It's weird. Do some study on that. Do not let evil overcome you. Overcome evil by doing good. What did you hear? And what one or two or three things stand out to you? What are the two or three things that the Holy Spirit is prompting in you? I, I relate very much to Caleb's half-joking comment, oh, this is a big old long list of stuff I'm not good at. I understand. But as I look at this list, there are two or three things that the Spirit grabs me with. What is that for you? Love sincerely. Hate evil. Cling to good. Be devoted to each other. Is God prompting you to show brotherly love or to honor others? Is the Spirit prompting you to have zeal and to be fervent and to serve the Lord? What about joy? Be joyful. Having hope. That's a word that I'm giving verbally to a lot of people in the last 90 days. Uh, because of your generosity, we're able to help different people in the community. One couple uh, who was displaced by the tornado and lost their jobs. Their only vehicle was crushed by a carport. They didn't have any insurance. They called asking could we help them with some food and money to buy a tent. But we've been able through generosity to do much more than that. In fact, I saw the man this morning. He had a smile on his face. He's heading to a job. I said, there's one word I want to plant in you. The word hope. And he smiles and goes, yes. Yes. Be patient in affliction. Pray faithfully. Share with others. Be hospitable. Bless others. Rejoice with others. Weep with others. Live in harmony. Don't be proud. Associate with people who are not considered by others to be important. Don't think that you're better than others. and Don't repay evil. Do what is right and live at peace. Don't take revenge. Show kindness even to enemies. And do not be overcome by evil, but overcome it with good. You know, when I read this, I realize that coming in contact with Jesus is a transformative thing. And this same book in Romans, a few chapters before that, says the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you and me. And so as I walk in step with the Spirit, as you walk in step with the Spirit, our lives are transformed. And these things become a fruit of our lives, not a checklist by which we have to follow in order to earn God's love. No, because we are loved by God, it transforms us. It changes us. I can't do these things perfectly, and neither can you. But boy, walking hand in hand with the Lord, it, it's a whole different ball game. How do you do that? Well, you just lay your life at the foot of the cross. You lay down who you are and everything that you are to Jesus. And He takes you just as you are, forgives you and transforms you, and you live a whole new life, a life of joy and fervence and zeal and hospitality and kindness and peace. Let's stand together and sing. I have found here love and mercy from an infinite supply.
I've spent some time thinking about what I was going to just say briefly um, this morning. Without trying to be um, too emotional or dramatic. Um, I think the last few months have been the hardest months of mine and Courtney's lives. Some of you know more intimately what that story's been. Um, we found out not long after the tornadoes that a, a dear friend of mine in college had lost their four-year-old girl in Cookville to the storms. A few weeks later, the virus hit and the pandemic happened. And it's funny, we, we sit here talking to Heather a lot outside when we were greeting this morning. And as she walked away, Courtney looks at me and she goes, that's the girl version of you. Because Heather's just bouncing around, just so excited that she sees people for the first time in so long. And I've, I've realized over the last few months, my inability to interact with people has been so detrimental to my spirit. The end of April, we got a phone call that it wasn't a surprising call that Courtney's sister had passed away. Um, she'd overdosed. And it just feels like, I mean, there's more involved in, in the middle of those stories. And I don't know what normal looks like. I don't know what your last few months have been like. But I read passages like Romans 12. And then I think about the context of what we're doing here. And we look at the table that's been set before us. In the shadow of the cross, with the hope that's really there. And at the top of my Bible, before you start reading in verse 9, it just simply says Christian ethics. And there's been moments in my life where I've looked for a reset. And in the last few months, it feels like every other week I'm looking for a reset, just trying to start over, trying to figure out some kind of freshness or something to make things make sense. And I can't think of something more valuable than to look at these passages and to think about Donaldson, to think about Middle Tennessee and the rest of the country and the world, and to think about the kind of people that we need right now. 
it's funny, we're standing out here greeting this morning, and masks or not, we still have so many more people to meet here that we've not been able to be introduced to yet, that are strangers to us, and yet, in the aftermath of Courtney's sister, we got cards from people we'd never talked to from here, just loving us and telling us that they were with us and surrounding us. And these are very incoherent thoughts. Um, but I think about what we do in communion and we come together. And I don't know if I've ever approached communion over the last few weeks with a more clear representation of what it feels like to live in a broken world. And to long for what's next. And to be reminded of what's to come and what has come and what we are a part of. And so I just, as we think this morning, as we prepare our minds and our hearts and as we remember the sacrifice that's been made for us, just remind ourselves what that means to us, what that means to the people that interact with us and what our lives ought to look like that ought to be so innate in us that this isn't some checklist, that this is just a, we've become so in tune with who God is and what he has for us, that these things just emanate from us. Um, so let's, in those thoughts, we'll pray for the bread. God, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for your church. God, we're thankful for your son. And it's been weeks since we've been able to do this physically, God, and we're so thankful for your faithfulness and your presence, God, and just we ask that as we take of this bread that you bless it, God, and allow us to remember the sacrifice that was made for us so that we can walk in newness of life, that we can look for those new moments and wake up every day to your mercies, God. That at your feet we lay down everything, God, that surrounds us in this world knowing that you have already won, that you've already found victory, and that you've invited us into that at this table, God. We're thankful for that. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. faster than normal, so let's pray again. God, we're just in awe of who you are. We're thankful that, that you've created a way for us to be washed in you and cleansed in you, God, and made new in you and made whole in you, God. And even though that what feels like sometimes all surrounds us is just these pain and anguish and anxiety and fear, God, and, and just that, that you've You've brought us into a newness of life, and you've washed us in your blood, God. And as we take this juice, this, this representation of that blood, God, I ask that we remind ourselves of that washing and that cleansing, God, that you've made a, a way for us, and you've paid the price with your own son's blood. And it's in his name we pray. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who lived his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth
We're so, so glad to see you today and thank you for being with us. In just a moment, we're going to have a blessing and we will close with a song. And after that, our, our, share, our uh, ushers will dismiss us by rows. And those on this side, you'll be dismissed starting from the front. And those on this side, you'll be dismissed starting from the back. And we ask that you make your way to the parking lot and uh, be sure not to... Uh, stop in the hallways of the door entrances. And once you get in the parking lot, if you feel comfortable hugging and high-fiving and shaking, do that. Uh, I'd encourage you to ask, though, instead of just taking it for granted. Uh, for instance, we had my mom and one of my brothers over for supper Friday night. My own mom didn't want to hug me. She just stuck the elbow. Okay, you know, there you go. But anyway, uh, if you feel comfortable hugging, great. If you don't, that's great, too. Do whatever feels comfortable. We'll do that out in the parking lot. And if, as you leave, if you would take your trash with you, there are trash receptacles at each exit. And you can also place your offering in a basket at the table or give online. And about 74% of us now are, are giving online, and that's a very helpful thing. It's so good to be together. If you would, let's stand up and let's give each other a wave and a shake. Say hello to those around you. All right, say hello. Hey, hey, how you doing? And uh, we're going to have, uh, th this will be the passing of the peace, okay? Here you go. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our blessing is going to come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. And the church says, Amen. let's all uh, dismiss with the doxology this morning. Praise God from God.